In this example, I'd like to consider a uh, round torsion bar of length L that has a constant gj, and it's subjected to a distributed torque, little t, that's equal to c times z over L. So c is a constant, so we have a linearly distributed uh, surface torque along the length of the bar. And I'd like to find an expression for the rotation of the bar at any location z along its length. So the first thing I want to go ahead and do is uh, make a cut in the middle of the bar and make a free body diagram of the system here to try and determine what the internal torque looks like. So if I go ahead and do that, I have this diagram as shown here, and let me go ahead and sum the torques on this end piece here. So if I sum the torques on that end piece, I find that the internal torque T of Z is equal to the integral from Z to L of little t integrated uh, with respect to z. And so that's a simple integral, so I get c over 2l times l squared minus z squared as a result. So that gives me the internal torque. Well, the internal torque is going to be related to the twist rate by dividing the internal torque by gj. So I immediately get an expression for the twist rate as a function of z. And to find the rotation itself, I just need to integrate this relationship here. So I'll go ahead and integrate from 0 to some arbitrary location z and that then allows me to find out what phi of z is taking advantage of the boundary condition that the bar is built in at z equals 0 so I know that phi of 0 equals 0. So that gives me a final result for the rotation rate which is this cubic polynomial shown here in this box. Okay, So that gives me the rotation field which was the question that we were asked. Now, when you're doing problems like this, they, they, they can often get a little complicated and it's important to do some quick checks. So for instance, we could check the boundary condition of our final result and simply plug in z equals zero and verify in fact that the result is zero, which it is in this case because there's a leading z sitting out here. So if I plug in a zero, I'll get zero out of that. Uh, another good thing to check is the dimensions of the problem. So if I go ahead and look at the dimensions of the problem, C has dimensions of torque per unit length, so force times length over length. Z has dimensions of length. L has dimensions of length. And then in the denominator, I have G, which is force per unit length squared. And I have J, which has dimensions of length to the fourth. And then the term in the parentheses has unit dimensions or no dimensions. So if I look at this, I'll see that the forces cancel. And then in the numerator, I end up with an L squared. And in the denominator, I have an L squared. So everything cancels out. And I end up with a non-dimensional expression sitting on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I have rotation, which has no dimension. So everything checks out. So it's important. that's a really important to check to try and make after you're done solving a problem is, is everything dimensionally consistent?